Hello, my name is Jan Thielmann and in this video I want to talk about model, model validators. So, what is a model validator? As you might know, every um, window and every tab in this window is um, backed by a model. And you can um, create a piece of code which validates this model. And it has different types um, where you can jump in to do your validation. For example, you could validate the model before it is saved, after it is saved, when it has a change in it, or when it's deleted, or after it was deleted. So, how do you create a model validator? To do this, open Eclipse and create a new plugin. I call mine, for example, Org Evinos model validator test and since I don't want my plugin in the uh, source code repository of item Pierre I uncheck use default location click on browse and create a new directory somewhere else and choose this to um, save my uh, code I use the OSGI framework Equinox and here I use the Java 6 environment because it can always happen that a client uh, still uses um, Java 6. Uh, you have to provide a name and a unique idea. So after you created the plugin, um, the first thing you want to do is to open the manifest and here add some uh, other plugins to the dependencies list. And what you normally um, add is the base plugin and the plugin utils. So now I create a new package and I call mine model validators in which I create a new class my model validator. If you want to create a model validator, you have to implement an interface called model validator. And it provides you with some um, methods. The first method is the initialize method, which gets called after your model validator was loaded. Then it has a getter method for the client, a login method, which gets called when the user logged in. And here you have the methods you can use to validate a model. And you have two options uh, of things you can validate. You can either uh, validate a model or you can validate a document. If you have a sales order, for example, this is an example of a document. It has the document status and the document type. And when you um, Oh, my server isn't running, but if you um, hit this button and you prepare a document or you complete it, then you can, um, yeah, validate this document in this method. So let's jump into this interface. And here you see um, which types uh, you can validate. For the models, you have the um, before new, the after new, uh, the change types and the delete types. For documents you have uh, for example before prepare, um, before void, before close, before reactivate and so on. <coughs> so in the initialize method what I um, always like to do I create a variable for the um, client ID so I re can uh, return it in the getter. And here you have to um, register your model validator to the model, model validator engine. And you do this by calling engine dot add model, is it model change? Yes. And here you have to provide um, the table name for which you want to listen if you want to validate a model. Let's um, do this with the uh, order table. 
and the listener is this class. If you want to um, yeah, uh, validate a document, you would add, uh, add the doc validate. And here is the same, you um, provide the table name and the listener, which is this in this case. Also, I check if the provided client is not null, and if so, then my ad client id equals the client's client id. To um, yeah, to see that my model validator really loads, I will add a few logs. So I create a new C logger. Like this. And add a few logs here. So that should be enough for basic implementation for the model validator. To let the application know that you have a model validator, you need a model validator factory. So I again create a new package, call it for example factories, and here I create a new class. In which I extel, in which I implement the I model validator factory. Implement the method. And the thing about model validators is that you have to add them in the application dictionary. And um, there you will provide a class name. And here in my factory I can check this class name and if the class name equals, for example, or even knows, uh, my model validator. Now let's use the full qualified class name. So it's model validators my model validator. Then I return a new my model validator like this to make sure that my um, factory um, gets loaded I add a little lock here and yeah that's basically it for the code but um, the OSGI framework doesn't know that my plugin provides a service for this um, model validator factory. So what I have to do is I have to add a new component definition. And you do this by adding a new file from the plugin development section. And here you choose component definition. This name, the name of the file has to be unique in your plugin. And click on finish. Now here you have to um, provide a unique name uh, which has to be unique um, in the whole application. So what I like to do is um, I put the plugin's name in here followed by model validator factory. And normally you only need one model validator factory uh, per plugin you have. Then you browse and 
um, select the factory class and also you have to add a property it's called service ranking it's of type integer and give it a value from about 100 or so and uh, what this property does is um, when the OSGI framework um, looks for all the model validator factories which uh, different plugins um, can provide then it will order these uh, factories by their service ranking and um, yeah if you have um, a factory sometimes and it can happen that idempia provides a default factory for um, a service and if you don't put the service ranking property in your plugin then it can happen that the default implementation will be loaded before your own implementation and if the default implementation um, returns um, yeah, a default um, model validator for every class uh, the model factory for example does this then your um, own implementation will never be loaded also you have to specify which services um, this component provides and in our case it's the i model validator factory save it now you have to make sure that in your manifest there is an entry called service component uh, with your XML file but normally Eclipse creates this entry for you okay so that should um, it be basically now let's um, restart the server activate the plugin make it auto start run the application server so as I mentioned um, if you want to use a model validator you have to enter it in the application dictionary and to do this you have two options the first option you have is um, you can um, go to the client where you want your model validator to be um, loaded and there's under technical a field for the model validation class and here you can um, separate it by a comma add different model validators there's um, a second option when you log into the system client there's a window called model validator and here you can create model validators which are then available to every client not only the client where you enter it so here I checked user maintained my model validator and here I have to provide a class name so I go here and copy this class name give it a sequence number because the uh, model validators are loaded um, by their sequence number which you can see here and now I have to um, restart the server so I stop this because the model validators um, only get loaded at startup and from then on, then on they are cached So let me start this and normally now we should see an error when we try to log it yes missing class global model validator so this is a pro problem um, we activated the plugin but the start level is default and uh, now it can happen that our plugin is loaded after the application tries to load the model validators so when I switch the start level to 1 for example and run the application again then I can now see that my model validator gets loaded yeah so this is in my opinion a big disadvantage but fortunately uh, the OSGI way we use an item here 
has a newer way of model validators. Um, they are called event handlers. Uh, there's another video where you can learn about event handlers, but it's also good to know about the older way, the model validator way. This is uh, not really new, it's already there in Adempia, and I believe it's back there in Compia. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit older, but it still works, and there are still a lot of model validators in Adempia. But if you um, use Adempia uh, to release, then you are able to use the event handlers, and I really recommend you to use the event handlers if you are able to. Uh, however, in older releases, they weren't there, so um, if you work with older releases, then you have to use model validators. Now, let's go to our sales order window <coughs> and check for the validation. And as you can see here, our model validator gets called. I hope this video helped you and see you in the next video.